I'm supposed to speak on what is the internet and uh, tracing the locus of power on the internet. Uh, we did this exercise deliberately with Sundar and the Department of Philosophy and Humanities because I think, and that's what Sundar started with, that one important aspect and part of what we need to do is to make sense of what is happening. And that's what philosophers do well. And uh, we as some kind of an activist organization, that's what we hope we do, uh, we decide, try to act, figure out what is needed and what do you act on. And those things are both very linked, uh, making sense of things, understanding them, and then you figure out what is it you want to do, what is it that is needed to be done. And uh, of course, as people who need to act, we also act without having fully made sense of a thing because there's not always the luxury to make full sense and then act uh, if what you need to act for is important. And therefore, we do act on half-baked senses which would come through when I speak or my colleagues would have spoken uh, and we make, try to make sense as we go along. Uh, so I would basically be talking about what is to be done. Of course, before that, what is the problem and why we need to do it? What is to be done and what is the role of us in it? And that's the political issue. Yesterday, most people, perhaps even today, uh, we have spoken about how internet impacts information systems, impacts media, culture, freedom of expression, uh, and how the world is changing. But we, in that, have kept the internet as constant. You know, it's a given thing. It's like uh, you plug there and you get electricity to 20 watts, 220 volts, and that's it. And then what can electricity do? It can work a grinder, a washing machine, television, computer, but that electricity is constant. We kept internet constant. And today, I would like to talk about the internet as a social entity and not treat it as a constant because what the internet is determines what it does. Uh, so we would take away that comfort of speaking of internet easily and then saying this is what it's doing. And we now would start talk about the structure of the internet, what the internet is. Uh, the first lecture, Sundar spoke a lot about his biggest problem with the internet and social justice equation is that the notion of social itself is slipping uh, in this new world. And uh, whether we need to focus on that, and yes, I think that's an important aspect. What does the internet do to the social? And Sundar did contribute about his thoughts about hyper-individualism and how it kind of compromises, redefines what we understood as social categories. And I think that's, that itself is very important. I asked him a question uh, at the end of his lecture. Uh, did he think that internet was a social technology more than many other technologies? And Sundar responded more in terms of impact. But I also wanted, the basic question was in about in terms of construction. Now, is internet in construction a more social technology than typical technologies? Uh, is a question I would uh, investigate first. So they also spoke about big society actions being very primary. That is, the state has built technology always, and we know the history of the internet. It started in a Ministry of Defense lab in the US. And its many forms are being contributed still by the state, including the NSA. And let me stop here. When I say internet, internet is everything. Internet as the pipes, internet as the content, internet the structures over it. We vaguely know what internet is. NSA is also constructing a part of the internet. So that whole vague thing is the internet. So big society action is important. Market, corporates, state are constructing technologies. They have also always constructed technologies. But are there a significant element of small society action involved in construction of this particular technology? And that is important, and that really makes it a little different than other technologies, also more potent. 
because it is a communication technology and communication is the fiber of society. I mean, society is constituted by many things, but if you have to say reduce it to some fiber of what is a society, it's, it's communication, it's institutions and organizations build over communication, and therefore technology of communication is a very different kind of technology. And I do think uh, in some senses the technology we are talking about is very social in the everyday manner in which we interact with it. In some ways they create it, and I don't take that bottom-up uh, thing about this is all created by the people uh, for ourselves, not at all. I mean, it's the corporates and the state who have been big time creating it. But the fact that we are linked to it and we are interacting with it and creating it is a very significant part of this society. Yesterday, Vishnu talked about techno sociality and it being subcutaneous, which is a very creepy feeling, and that was his effort to do with you that it is subcutaneous. Uh, thing and I think it is subcutaneous to some kind of social fiber which is happening right now, and we cannot deny that. Now, again, uh, since my primary interest is to act, I would go back to a question which Sundar raised and also Nikhil raised, and there is this: whether the public as presence is better or the virtual is better, and I'm perfectly fine whatever we take it to be the better. But in that case, if we decide one is better, what are our public actions for it? Are we therefore, I mean, even if we have to take up hammers and break machines, uh, which the Deutsch did, and it's perfectly fine. But the point is, we need to have a plan of action with a, with a very, very strong social phenomenon which is happening. So it could be that, yes, we want to ban technologies in colleges. That's fine. I mean, we can talk about it. But yes, that is important. In the first level, we need to recognize the intensity, the importance of this phenomenon, and then take the decision on what other social public action we want to support. And I think what is happening with this technology, and that's what is the word used here, mediated. I know it was deliberately made to shock people. Internet mediated world seems to give it to it certain specifications with people would not be very comfortable. But I think there is some very significant intermediation taking place in what is social today. Uh, not only internet is a social technology, I think it is a technology of sociality. What we need, know as uh, social is, social is institutions, social is organizations, social are interactions. I think that's what social is. Organizations and institutions are constrained patterns of behavior. Uh, I wouldn't theorize, I mean, I'm not a theorist at all, but we can recognize our patterns of interactions are concretizing in a manner in which a big element of that is technology. There is this, that subcutaneous layer of technology in which new institutional organizational forms are taking place. You know, Castells have a full theory about networks being the primary organizational form of current times. And it is true because this workshop, for instance, was put together over the internet. And if internet was not there, the composition of this group would be very different. And that is real. That's not unreal in any manner because the different set of people would be sitting here. That cannot be considered unreal as less people, peoply than something else. So I think, uh, now the problem is that Increasingly, as certain kind of sociality is being intermediated by technology, the social structures were always there, but there's a very big element of technology over it. There's a strong layer of technology over the new social structures. And we need to understand that because, uh, because it can be manipulated in very strong manners. Because if the very mediating systems of society can be manipulated, the impact is hugely uh, magnified with that. And, and that's the question of internet-mediated society, and that's the question of internet and ICTs being a mediating uh, system and their nature. Uh, okay, um, yesterday it was spoken that policy is architecture. No, architecture is policy, which a lot of people find uh, very, very strange. Yeah, yeah, the original one is policy, okay, but whichever is original, policy and politics is architecture. Policy is also a social structure which generally mediates social systems. 
policy comes out of social contracts. Policy says, now these are the things which we all agreed are a common rules. Policy is a set of uh, common rules which we agree to or are imposed on us as uh, rules of the game. But policy is a social structure. And how, if somebody said that technology architectures are new policy, there's something very deep there. It says that technology architectures set certain kind of rules of our sociality, which are almost like policy. It's, in fact, stronger than policy, and that's what I'm going to come. If policy is supposed to set our common rules, technology architectures set our common rules because that word mediated. Our sociality is strongly nowadays mediated through technologies. Doesn't matter whether you like it or not, whether Sundar, Mikhail, or somebody else likes it, little less than some other people, this group was organized much over internet communications. And many of us do work over internet, uh, we consume over internet, and some people produce over the internet, and therefore social structures are changing. The importance of the thing to the society around you is what we are talking about. So we, we are talking about uh, the fact that like policy is a structure of social mediation, technology itself could be a structure of social mediation. And as I was saying earlier, it's stronger structure than policy. Uh, there is a law which says that you can't spit on the streets, but you still do spit uh, if nobody is looking. Uh, we do those kind of small things because policy is actually socially negotiated in micro context. It's not hard rules in that sense. Section 144 is imposed, which says five people can't gather, which is a law, which is policy, uh, but you know, police still negotiates it locally. There are people who get together and you say, no, no, this is, you will be arrested, not arrested. I mean, these small negotiations take place through these social structures of mediation. But architecture is a very, very strong social mediation structure, which can absolutely uh, be the last word. I mean, they wouldn't, it can control much more than even policy. So that in that sense, uh, the technology architecture is even stronger than policy. So the point, uh, therefore, is, and for me, the point of what needs to be done is that if we recognize that ICTs is architecture, um, ICT architecture is policy, then it automatically leads to the proposition that it has to be publicly owned. And that's a very simple case I'm making. If we all here agree to a simple proposition that social ICTs, like internet, many kinds of social software, which I can talk about, which is not the same software as runs the washing machine, which is an individual standalone software, but social softwares, internet being one of them, if they are a new architecture mediating sociality, then we should be able to agree that it needs to be publicly owned. Now, the simple proposition, if people agree to, would lead to a certain set of frameworks and actions. And that alone, I think, is sufficient at this point because uh, we know that ICTs is public, privately produced and privately owned. And then the question Sundar raised was, we're talking about technology, we don't talk about who supplies the technology. And the problem that private sector supplies the technology, controls the technology, but as we say it's become the architecture of social interactions, then it needs, that part of it needs to be publicly or communally owned. Uh, is a uh, single most uh, important factor. And of this architecture, there are two aspects. This is the second part of what I want to talk about. One is the technostructure and what I call as infrastructures. These are also concepts I'm making up as I go along. Uh, technostructure is, uh, is the, the pipes which interact and they're complex convulsions. And the infrastructure is uh, the micro data which flows through it. I will come to it why I don't call it simply information systems, but let me go one by one. Now, internet was supposed, a lot of people still think internet is simply a set of pipes. Like, uh, I'm talking and if you are sitting very far away and the pipe can amplify it, 
like some Nikhil was speaking on the mic and Prabir said that's also technology, but manipulation is very less. I mean, you, you're not afraid because it simply magnifies. It's, it's simply a pipe. And initially, internet was supposed to be a pipe. Uh, it was a pipe which was very efficient because messages could route through any given communication system. Those who are from a technology background would understand it. Very efficient pipe. It could be asynchronous. When you're not there, the message can still wait for you. It was a neutral thing. I mean, it was trying to do nothing with the message. And that was a great uh, thing about the internet. It was neutral. And we could, at that time, have talked about the internet as people still talk about it as a given. Now, as we went along, uh, internet became complex. The pipes became convoluted. Uh, they were jets, taps, uh, blocks uh, in those pipes, uh, and our internet became an application-based thing. And somebody said, uh, you learned a lot about browser versus uh, the search. And in a, in a way, it's a very important thing which talks, okay, which talks to what I do. Yeah, so, uh, so th that, that's also interesting because when you're browsing, you're still being given in somewhat a neutral uh, browsing. I mean, it's not neutral because the, the, what is on the top and what is below is still determined, but still they're trying to put, give you everything. But search is an application. They tell you, ask me, I will find out. And that's not really neutral because they, they have started doing things for you. So what I'm saying is, Internet became a very complex set of pipes, uh, which now can be called as a social software. It started mediating. It's no longer normal because it mediates, it amplifies, it manipulates, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And most of our internet right now is uh, that kind of applications, uh, which can hardly be considered neutral, and therefore there's an enormous amount of power uh, they are sitting on the internet. <coughs> and the structure of this system whether it is made for public interest or whether it is serving anybody's private interest is the issue. And we would normally agree that such kind of a public infrastructure, uh, which is a social mediating uh, system, should be public. And that's the first thing, the techno structure, the software which intermediates uh, is the first part of the architecture which should become public. And second increasingly is what I call the infrastructure the structure of the information which flows through the system. <coughs> Earlier it used to be uh, IP was a big thing, intellectual property. Intellectual property refers to a body of knowledge which can easily be propertyized, and there is a huge amount of politics about it. Information systems is something we are used to, but infrastructure I am talking about is a micro data which flows through the system which, uh, which is about big data. You heard big data? Yes. Uh, so information structures is what Aadhaar is trying to build. Information structure is what Google possesses. So these are the information structures again, where the micro information which is contributed is by people like all of us. But the structure is owned by certain people which gives them enormous power. And in the current age, this is a very important new development around where there is no public policy principles. Who owns the microdata? Even if you produce the microdata, do you own the microdata? You don't. Then would a person who can collect it, organize it, who owns the infrastructure, owns the microdata? That's not very clear. There are no public principles about it. But I think that also comes naturally that the infrastructures of the new architecture should in some ways be owned by the people in public interest. Now, how would this work out comes in later, but I think these two principles, and I first derived the simple principle that the ICT architecture should be publicly owned. Within that, there are two principles. One is the techno architecture, another is the info architecture, and that these should be publicly owned are the principles of action which we think are important, and from there should uh, follow certain kind of advocacy stuff. Okay, um, I, I, I don't know whether uh, in the last five years I would just like to ask people that do you 
understand when somebody says that internet, whether internet has been more centralized over the last five years or decentralized, what would you say? Centralized? Anybody? It is more centralized. And is it becoming more decentralized? Actually, it's both. Bit of both. Yes. Bit of both. What do you mean by it being more decentralized? So you are saying it is getting more decentralized? No, I am saying it's a bit of both, yeah, yeah, that's both. what. So it's like centralized when I say, okay, like the countries like China, they are putting some restriction to the websites which like, uh, like some, some uh, standard of censorship is there. So in that way it is being centralized, but otherwise internet as it is is uh, decentralized. So how is it getting more decentralized in these years? Do you think there is any movement which you find as it getting more decentralized? 